Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and we're going to be looking at first of all the MFDs and the basic functions of the MFD. So each MFD can be used for different tasks. We're going to look at those different tasks but we're not going to look at each one in a huge detail because each one of these tasks is going to be covered in a different video. You know the, the, the weapons will be covered in the weapons video and the navigation will be covered in the navigation video. I'm just going to give an idea of what's available in these MFDs. As well as that we're going to look at the CDU, the Control Display Unit, and I'm circling it here. I'm going to look at the various, again, the various functions of the CDU, but not going any, into any real detail for the same reasons. So first of all, let's look at the MFD layout and roughly how that works, because that will help us understand it a bit better. So we've got along the bottom here some options for the different pages. The first bottom four buttons basically allow us to go to different pages, and we like to liken this to the Windows taskbar. So this Windows taskbar, we've currently got TAD, Dismas, TGP, and STAT available. It is possible for us to change out these for different tasks. So that's the first thing we want to look at. So in this case, if we went to press and hold the STAT button with our left mouse click, we've got the ability to set different options, different pages, if you like. And we can, for instance, the load, we could add that down, change that out for one of these down here onto our taskbar. So I'm not going to do that at the moment, but that's just to explain that's possible. We'll go back to TAD for now. So we've got these four on the taskbar. So the other buttons that will go around the MFD are controls based on the particular page that you've got selected. So we've currently got the TAD selected. The TAD is Tactical Awareness Display. This is a mixture. In fact, before we do that, I'm going to just get it so that we can see it a little bit better. So I'm going to go soy left control hold until I make it our soy, our center of interest with this box around it. I'm then going to press DMS aft and zoom out a little and you can see it is a map. It's a moving map and allows us to view our navigation. You can see what waypoints one, two and three here, but it's more than navigation. It's also our situation awareness page it allows us to show where targets are. We can put, for instance, mark points where possible targets are, and they will be, they will be visible on this TAD page. As well as that, we can share targeted information or SPIs with other ATENs in our data link. We've got a data link video showing how to do that. So if, if my friend Riddle was up over here placing targets down, he can share that, and then I can see his information, his target information. As well as that, I can see other aircraft in my A10C group. Again, using the data link, if Riddle was out here flying around at the moment, we would be able to see him. So it's a full situational awareness page with those kind of capabilities. And you can see we've got all sorts of functionality around here, but we're not going to go through them because we'll be going through them in the separate tutorial videos. Then we've got the DSMS, the Digital Stores Management System, or the, just the stores pages, I like to call it. This allows us to select our different weapons. So these are the weapons that we've got on board at the moment. A lot of these weapons are complicated and need parameters configuring. As an example, let's say we want to change the settings of this GBU-12. There'll be all kinds of settings we want to change. Well, we could go to inventory, we could click on it, number seven, we could go to GBU, GBU-12, and here's all the stuff, the parameters we can set for this. Most of this I probably won't even understand, but different types of fusing. We've got the laser code because it's a GBU. You know, stuff here, um, we're not going to go into any detail, but I'm just trying to point out that here is where we can change all the parameters for that weapon. And uh, I'm going to quit out of here back to the basic DSMS. We can also select our weapons here for usage. Next is going to be our TGP, that's our targeting pod. So we have a lightning targeting pod, let's go and have a look at that outside. On our right wing there, next to the sidewinders. And this allows us to do advanced targeting. So if we clicked on it here, we can also have it on the right MFD out of interest, uh, they cross over. So this is its blank screen because it's currently in standby. But if I were to put it to air to ground mode, note we can also use air to air mode. And you can see it's basically a glorified camera on a gimbal mount that can swivel around to almost an, any angle and zoom in and out and target for us. Again, we're not going to go into any real detail, but let me just show you that I can slew it around and stuff like that. So I'm going to have to make this screen here, the soy, it's currently not soy, soy is sensor of interest. I'm going to press and hold the left coolie key and we've got a box around it. And now we can use our slew keys to target, designate the slew keys to move it around. And we're just looking at the concrete obviously in front of us, but you get an idea. And uh, you can see it on our hub there in that little diamond there. And that's how we can go and do targeting information. Again, we've got a 20 minute video on this. So we're not going to go into the details now. Next, we're going to go to stat. In fact, I'm going to turn that off for good practice. I'm going to go to stat, which is our status. These are our various systems in the A10C. 
and you have to test them well you don't have to because from a hot start they are tested automatically but you can test them if i were to press the uh the test button i can choose the different systems with these buttons here and i can press the test button to test them i'm not going to do it now because it takes several minutes and it comes up with whether they're valid or whether they're problematic this will change slightly depending on your loadout for instance we've got jdams currently on this loaded on this aircraft and you can see we've got a specific jdam option there this isn't a great deal of use to us because we do not have random faults turned on the missions that we do you may choose to have random faults turned on dcs does simulate that in which case a page like this would be extremely useful okay so next just for ease we're going to jump to the right mfd we've got the tgp repeated over here we don't need to go through that again the next we've got the maverick specific screen for using the mavericks and the reason we're going to have a specific screen for it is that we can look via the actual sensor that is on the front of the selected maverick so this can become the screen of the sensor that's on this particular maverick so what we're going to do is show that now currently master arm is safe so i'm going to turn the master arm on ping and you can see that we're now looking through essentially the IEO camera of that Maverick. And again, we can make this story and we can slew it about, find targets and deploy our weapons like that. Again, we've got various uh, functionality around here, but we're going to leave that until the Maverick video. So next, we're going to go to the CDU, the control display unit. So what I want to say is that this here is a repeater screen of the main CDU system here. It literally just repeats whatever's being shown on that screen. The reason it's here is because it's much easier to use it up front here. And this and some of the other functions that we've seen on the MFDs are actually controlled via the upfront controller, the UFC here. We've got numbers, letters, various stuff that we can use to actually input. Again, it's up here because it's easy to use with the pilot can still look through the, the front screen. So that's that. We're not going to go into any details of the CDU until we look down at the main CDU there. Next, we've got the MSG, the messages. This is a system for aircraft in the same group to be able to send messages, just text messages, essentially, between each aircraft on the data link. Uh, so this was obviously before mobile phone texting was about, and I like to think of it as just a glorified way of um, kind of mobile phone texting between aircraft. At this point, I have uh, something I forgot is that at the bottom you have a roll indicator, attitude indicator here of each screen and a barometric altimeter. The reason we've got that there is because you may often be flying heads down in an MFD and you want your basic control to be seen there. Cover something I quit, uh, missed a little bit earlier on. I'm going to keep press and hold stat and get the auxiliary functions. Um, the only one that's not loaded up on my taskbar at the moment is load. So that is one that we use for, I'll click on it. That is a function that allows us to load up data, either navigational data or weapons data or, and other type of data, I've forgotten the other, sorry, at the beginning of a flight or if, for instance, you change your weapons loadout at some point, you may need to load or update new information to your DSMS. So that's what that is. To actually use it, I would click on it here. In fact, what I'm going to show you, and I would just click on it down, for instance, down here. And now the load function is now available down here on the taskbar. Okay, so that is the MFD, the basic functions of the MSD gone over. Next, we want to go over the CDU. So this here is the CDU. It is primarily our, interfa our main interface with the main navigation systems. But it's not only that. We can or we do also have an amount of weapons information or targeting information. So that's a point to bear in mind. So we've got two very important toggles or these switches at the bottom here. First, the steer point knob. So this is what I like to think as a CDU master mode. That's probably an inaccurate thing to, to do. But if I want to, for instance, only view navigation points that are relevant to our current flight plan, then we have it in flight plan. But we may have other navigation points that aren't part of the flight plan that we may want to view. In that case, we'll take it out of flight plan and we will have it in either mark for primarily mark point or mission, which I believe has any mission specific waypoints or mark points or whatever that are not part of the flight plan. So a very quick example, if we have it in flight plan here and we have a flight plan set by our mission editor and then we use the CDU here to set ourselves a, a new waypoint that is not yet part of the flight plan. We will not be able to use it or view it or navigate to it until we went to mission here. And then over here, we've got the page knob. This decides or selects what we're going to use this CDU screen for. So in other, we can basically use it for numerous purposes, as we'll see in a minute. If we go to position, oops, sorry. If we go to position, then it's just used for position, just used for our steer point or just used for our waypoint information. So most of the time, this is going to be on other. 
Next, we've got the control inputs here, where, where we do our inputs. We've got our numerics here. We've got our characters here, backspaces, whatnot. Here is our page up, page down. Often this little screen isn't enough for one page, so we're going to have to page up or page down. Then we've got our master modes. I like to call them here. We've got the system. In fact, why don't we just go through them? We've got the system. Then under each of these master modes, we've got several options. So under system, we've got our EGI, which is our type of navigation. We've got INS, which is Inertial Navigation System Only. We've got GPS, which is our GPS navigation only. Reinitialize last D, which is wind and temperature correction for weapons and stuff. HARS, which is uh, to do with our HUD, our ADI and whatnot. And uh, DTSAS, I can't remember what that is at the moment. But And reset. It, but what I'm trying to show here is that we can get into these subcategories through by pressing these um, these characters here. So if I wanted to uh, go into the INS here, I could, and I could realign it, I could change its position, I could do whatever, update it, whatever I needed to do. So back to the Sys Master Mode, so that's that. Then we've got the Nav Master Mode. And again, we've got various options for the Nav, so we can change the type of Nav that we're interested in, the blended between GPS and INS, or INS on its own, or GPS on its own. Change the attributes, options, uh, divert. We've got a load of um, list of divert bases, information about divert bases that we've got here. We can change the time, various time settings, current time, master time, time settings that are of interest. We can realign from here. We can update and whatnot. Uh, then we've, we're not going to go to any detail because we're going to cover these in detail in other tutorials. Our WP, we've got our waypoint here where we can change information regarding our steer point, our waypoint, our waypoint from, or our anchor point, our anchor point's where we um, if we were going to circle a target, isn't that is that right, Riddle? Or circle a bullseye? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So so anyway, that's there again, covered in the navigation tutorials. We won't go into it now. Offset, where we can create an offset of to a particular point, like a waypoint. Do you want to quickly explain what offset could be used for, Riddle? Offset is basically like let's say you have a target and like a main target and you want to attack something slightly to the left right or center without having to approximate distances you can put that in the distance information into that and it'll basically say okay your new point is here and that's it uh next we've got the flight plan manager so the a10c works via ideally via flight plans which is like a whole bunch of waypoints put in order together to create an entire flight plan and it can give you important information about the flight plan as you go along with that it also can allow you to employ weapons with that flight plan but again we've got a whole video on flight plans we're not going to go into that but just to say here that you can create new flight plans from here and select the active plan we've only got one the basic one we got from the mission editor msn which is the first and uh, but we could create more and change flight plans if we need to and that is the, what i call the master options of the cdu so we've given a brief description of the cdu and the rough functions that it is used for as well as the MFDs, next we're going to go and create some more videos looking at each of those individual pieces in more detail. I hope that helps and see you later.